Okay, so in the previous video, we have seen that whenever there's an increase in government spending, there is going to be a negative income effect. But when there is an increase in total factor productivity, that is Z increases, because Z denotes TFP, that is total factor productivity. Whenever there's an increase in Z, this is going to lead to two effects. One is the income effect, and the other is the substitution effect. So this graph over here basically shows how we can decompose the income and substitution effects of an increase in the total factor productivity. And this is a rather difficult graph to draw. So in this short recording, I am going to show how we can draw this graph. Okay, let me just draw this graph first and then I will explain why I'm doing what I'm doing, okay? Let's presume that's a straight line, please. Okay, so on the y-axis we have consumption, on the x-axis we have leisure. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to draw a PPF that looks something like this, okay? The next thing I'm going to do is to draw another PPF that looks something like this. Now notice that the shape of these two PPFs are not the same. Okay, next I'll use another color and draw an indifference curve that is tangent to both of these PPFs like this. And then I'm going to use another color to draw another PPF. Let's say, let's pick purple maybe. Okay, cool. So um, now this time the shape of this PPF has to be the same as the blue one. Okay. So So this is what this PPF should look like. It should meet um, the red one at this point, okay? Next, um, I'm going to draw an indifference curve using, let's say, orange. Now, if I want to show that the income effect is the same as a substitution effect, then I will mark this point over here and make sure that my indifference curve is going to be tangent to my PPF at this point. Okay, so that the income effect is shown as being equal to the substitution effect. Okay, but let's say that I instead wanted to show that the income effect is greater than the substitution effect. Now, let me first label these very quickly. Okay, let me just use this. So, this point right here, let's say it's L1. Okay and this right here is c1 this one is c2 okay and the ppf in purple is ppf number two the ppf in red this one is ppf number one okay and the ppf in blue right here is ppf number three Okay, cool. So um, next, like I was saying, oh, first, let me just, you know, also mark these points. Okay, so we have, let's call this point X. Okay, let's call this point Y. So first, let me just explain what's happening here. Okay, so um, what happens is, oh, I forgot to label this one. No, I did. So this is PPF number one in red, and this is number three, and this one is number two. Okay. So what happens first is that when there is an increase in technology, okay, let's say Z goes up. So what happens is that as a result of the increase in technology, obviously we know that there is going to be an increase in MPN, right? That is the marginal productivity of labor is going to increase, okay? Which means that there is going to be a corresponding increase in wage right and then we know that what happens as a result of an increase in wage is that the opportunity cost of leisure is going to increase so there's going to be a substitution effect which means that there is going to be a decrease in leisure right so we're going to move towards the left which means there's going to be a decrease in leisure so we move from point x to point y this is going to represent our substitution effect 
right on the other hand let me just erase that we also know that whenever there is an increase in wages obviously that means overall there is going to be an income effect which means that consumption is going to increase right and there's also going to be an increase in leisure so these are these uh, there are these opposing effects which we see whenever there's an increase in z so what we're trying to do here is to decompose the income and the substitution effects right now if i wanted to show that the move towards the left that is the substitution effect is the same that is it's equal to the income effect then basically i would you know um, end up at the same point that is there is no uh, change in the level of employment but on the other hand if i wanted to show that the substitution effect is greater or maybe the income effect is greater because it's basically the strength of the substitution effect versus the strength of the income effect that matters right so we have to decide which one is going to dominate um, so initially when i drew the graph basically it represented the fact that the income effect is equal to the substitution effect but if let's say i were to draw an indifference curve which is you know either over oh sorry okay let me just show that in another graph okay okay cool so this is what we had drawn and now i am going to show the three possibilities um so first of all let's presume that the income effect is equal to the substitution effect okay if i want to show this then in that situation i am going to choose a point z so we have x and we have y i'm going to choose a point z which is directly above x so that we have l1 is equal to l2 okay cool so point number z has to be here which means that our second indifference curve by the way this one in green is ic1 okay this one in green and now i'm going to draw ic2 such that it is okay let me just redraw that okay so our second indifference curve is going to be like this okay so in this situation um we have not increased or decreased our leisure so therefore we say that the income effect is equal to the substitution effect okay so there is so the effect on uh, so the effect on n that is employment is um, going to be such that n stays the same right okay although consumption has obviously unambiguously increased now the second possibility is where we have the income effect okay let me just draw this on a new slide so that we have this saved okay so the next possibility is that the income effect is greater than the substitution effect which means that we're going to have more of both right so c is going to increase but l is also going to increase so according to this we have to draw the second indifference curve such that it is tangent to this ppf in purple at a point where l1 is going to be less than l2 okay so the idea is that we need to be somewhere towards the right side of this point okay so this time i'm going to draw the indifference curve such that consumption definitely has to increase okay but the final point is going to be here so we are definitely better than you know c1 but because of the income effect we have not you know increased consumption as much as we could have so therefore we end up at this point that is this is our ic2 okay this green one is ic1 and point at point z we have a situation where leisure has increased as well as consumption okay let's call this corresponding point c3 like you could just you know draw a dot 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 like this the point is that um at point z we have shown that the income effect is greater than the substitution effect so initially we moved 
towards the left this is the substitution effect but then there's also this income effect which is moving us towards the right and we are showing that the income effect is greater than the substitution effect okay finally if we wanted to show that the income effect is less than the substitution effect that is the substitution effect dominates so we can do that simply by choosing a point somewhere over here towards the left of x so we would draw an indifference curve such that it is tangent to the ppf the purple ppf that is ppf number two at this point that is to the left of x so that we end up at a point where l2 is less than l1 so the substitution effect basically means like i said earlier that you increase your working hours that is you decrease leisure so there is a move initially from x to y but then like i said earlier there's also an income effect which means that you are going to move from y to z but as you notice the size of the substitution effect is greater than the size of the income effect which is why we end up at point z so in this situation i see one versus green one like i said earlier and this is ic2 okay cool and we're done